Hello everybody, welcome to a new episode of Free Desktop Recording Softwares, a series where I review a uh, free desktop recording software. <laughs> That's very simple. Let's take a look at ShareX. First things first, here's the photo of must-have features. These are the features that I usually look for from these free programs. So let's have a look at the website first. The website from just my angle looks pretty nice, slick, well organized. And here's what I like. It simply shows you the program, also gives you a little description of the program. So screen capture, file sharing, productivity tool. You scroll down and it says, why ShareX? This is a good question. Why should I use this program? Well, it's free, it's open source, no advertisement, and it's lightweight. Then if you keep scrolling down, there is actually a list of options that come with it. And you will see once we start the program that these actually are in the program itself. If I click on download, you'll notice that the download is actually 7.1 megabytes, which is actually a very small program. It actually is lightweight, as they claim. Since this program doesn't have professional or free version, it simply has one version. There's no need to compare it. Let me show you the program and how it looks like. As you can see, little icon shows up in the taskbar, I mean tray area, down there next to the clock, and this is the program. I was testing it out a little bit, of course, before I show you the program. So let's have a look at what it has and what it does. On the left side, we have a menu list. And that's basically where all of our options are listed. Very smooth, very simple, no additional buttons, everything in one place. And you can just find it very easily. So we have capture. Let's have a look at this. Now, there is one disclaimer I want to give before I go into the program in depth. This program is primarily to my knowledge, to what I've seen for taking screenshots. It does have recording capabilities, but its main thing is taking screenshots, capturing screenshots, hence the word capture that they use a lot here. So let me show you. We have a bunch of options to capture the screenshot, but what we are interested in is the screen recording. If I click this button, it's gonna record both of my monitors. Let me do that really quickly. So I click and it asks me, for, of course, first select the area. And if I just click right now, it's going to select both of the monitors. I, so far, I have not seen or found out a way to select one monitor except click and drag until I guess I am right there. So now I'm recording actually one monitor and this is how it looks like there. What I can see is the green lines around it, around my uh, window or should I say desktop, to stop the recording. Usually there should be a button at the bottom, but there isn't, so you have to right click on the icon and click stop. That's if you are... So that was the prompt that happens upon completion of whether it's a capture, whether it's a video recording, you, s you hear the sound prompt. And usually if you... Let me show you this really quickly. So if I go to capture and I go to screen recording and I select a particular region, you'll notice that the buttons actually are at the bottom of the selected screen or, or selected portion that you want to record. Since I rec wanted to record my full uh, desktop, the buttons were actually underneath the desktop to say so, so I couldn't click those. There's stop, there's also abort button. There is no pause button, however. Another option is screen recording into a GIF, which I already did. It's fairly straightforward again. Click, drag, same thing. If you actually right click, it cancels the recording attempt, if you will. Anyhow, those are the only screen recording options. You also have an option to show cursor and you can also do a screenshot delay, but we're not interested in screenshots. Moving on, we have a bunch of upload options. Then under workflow, we actually have two options and those are start stop screen recording using custom region and then start stop screen recording GIF using custom region, which essentially is the same thing as earlier. So there we go. Other than that, it has a bunch of other tools that don't really interest us. There's, there is video converter. And if I click on it, you'll see it opens a simple video converter that allows you to convert. That's, that's pretty much it. Nothing special about it. So moving on, we also have a bunch of other options. What do you want to do after you capture, after upload? What's your destination? Now, what interests us as well is the task settings. And you'll see we have a bunch of settings here. Let me focus on the main one, which is screen recorder. This is actually where we can choose frames per second, also GIF frames per second, show cursor in the recordings. We also can put a delay for the recording. Let's say you can have a three second delay. So let's do that and see how that works. We have fixed duration, which 
I don't know what this exactly means. Is it like a fixed duration of the video? Let's put five seconds and see if our recording is gonna stop at five seconds. We also have record using lossless encoding and then apply user encoding option. And we also have ask for confirmation when aborting. I'm not gonna do that. And that those are the options we have here. There is one more button, which is screen recording options. This one opens up it gives us a little bit more options, but that's about it. So let me show you. First things first, you need to install FFmpeg for this to work. And simply the first time you click the record button, it's going to give you a prompt that asks you, do you want to download it and install it? But there is also a button here to do that manually. One thing that's interesting here under sources, what I also like is how everything is organized simply into these little holders or outlines. See around there, like that's, that's very nice organization. Under sources, we can actually select the video source and audio source, but I don't see an option to select desktop audio and microphone audio separately. You, I can only select microphone audio here. There is one more option, however, here. Install recorder devices. And this simply installs these options, which I don't know exactly what they are supposed to do is because this is the only change that I have seen upon installing these. I thought I was going to get extra options, but I didn't. So anyhow, you have this option and then I'm gonna select my microphone. That's about it. Moving on to codecs, we have a bunch of them. I use H264 or X264, which is the, I think, sort of a standard these days. Also under audio codec, AAC or MP3, I'm sure you've heard about these two before. Those are the usual ones. I like to use AAC. You'll also notice when I change the video codec, the, the tab switches. So if I select H264, I can select constant rate factor, which I guess would affect the quality of the video. The lower amount, the better. 30 is the fault, so I'm going to leave it there. We have preset that I can select. This is sort you've seen this in the OBS. This also affects the quality below, also the, the performance of your computer upon recording. I think very fast is sort of just fine, and you'll see what exactly each option does if you just hover over. Anyhow, moving on, under AAC, I have the bitrate that I selected at 192, 128 is default, but I like to bump it up just a little bit. This is where I'm comfortable with the quality and that's about it. Under, down here at the bottom of the window, we have a couple of options for commands and shit, which I'm not really, I'm not a programmer, so I, I don't know about, you know, just gonna skip these. And that's about it. Once you have everything set up, click X. So those were the options we have when it comes to video recording capabilities. Let's do a quick video recording test. So I'm gonna go to capture and let's go to, Let's go to screen recording and I'm going to try my best to select my main monitor and not other monitor that I have. So there we go. Let's see if there's going to be delay. So it's still, and there we go. Now it started to record. There was no countdown. Let's see if it's going to stop after five seconds. And it does. So it actually did what it was supposed to do. There was no countdown before the recording started, but I was able to see the yellow circle in my tray area and then it turned red after three seconds. But it would be better if there was a countdown, however. Upon the completion of the recording, let's click and open up the video. It's gonna open up in my default. So, and there we go, now it's... And there you go. That's the recording. One thing that I am noticing with the recording, watch this. So, this is the recording. Let's quickly jump back to my desktop. What I'm seeing is there is just a slight color discoloration, just just slight discoloration, but it's it's so tiny, and there's just a tiny bit of quality loss, I think, just just very very tiny quality loss. You can pay attention to the text, especially the small text where it says capture, and you'll see how it becomes a little bit sharper once I go back to the desktop. First impressions, program is very slick, very well organized. There is nothing that goes against common sense, which is what I like. However, when it comes to video recording options, it lacks a bunch of them. One thing that I, I, I just want to point this out. Let me show you something. I'm going to do this capture and I'm going to go to monitor and I'm going to select my first monitor. This is going to capture a screenshot. I just want to show you something. I'm going to click capture and I'm going to take a screenshot using this program of my main monitor. So there we go. The program just took a screenshot. Watch this. Don't blink. So I'm going to open up this screenshot. Are you seeing any difference? 
I know this is a screenshotting program and obviously it does a phenomenal job. I don't see any difference. I was actually very surprised that there was no quality loss whatsoever. So this is the screenshot and this is my desktop right now. Screenshot, desktop. So no, no, no quality loss whatsoever. However, when it comes to video, Let's have a look at that in the later segment. Now what I want to focus on is does this program have luxury features and what are they? I think under here is nothing very luxury, but if I go to tasks, settings and I go to screen recorder, the luxury feature that I'm seeing is simply fixed duration and start recording after. So basically gives you a delay before you start recording. Later in my video, I will show you a 30 second sample. And this is great because I can come here, set 30 seconds, fixed duration, and I can record exactly 30 seconds. One thing that I want to test is when it comes to screen recording FPS, how much can I go? The highest you can go is 60. And one luxury feature that I think there's a lot of codecs that you can select and you can customize them a little bit down here. Let's have a look at the bad things I ran into. Well, first things first, I'm seeing under capture screen recording, that's, it's the same as if I go to workflows and then select these two. Being so clean program, why have extra options when there are none other than these? I don't know. There is a delay before the recording starts, but why is there, why is there no countdown whatsoever? There's no major indicator to tell you, oh, your recording is going to start in 3, 2, 1, something like that. So why have this delay? I don't know. Going under sources, under screen recording options, there is no option to record microphone into a separate audio track. Also, I don't see an option to select my headphones or speakers. I only see option to select the microphone, which is under audio source. Good things I ran into with this program. Well, simply the organization, how everything is very clean, everything is displayed, there's nothing counterintuitive. I mean, I mean tiny bit of things, but in majority, everything is just fine and sorted out very well. Under Codex, you have a lot of customization that for this free program, I think this is very just fine, honestly. Let's have a look at the sample video. So there we go. Just trying to test it out, record. I don't know how is it. it's, it's supposed to record exactly 30 seconds. I'm going to talk a little bit and I have the music playing. Let's see if it's going to record the music as well. That's about testing this recorder. And not much to say really, just looking. There's no impact really. I don't feel any impact. So here I have a sample video that I recorded and I just want to review it really quickly. Let's have a look. So there we go. Just trying to test it out. Record. As you can see, there is n no lag whatsoever. But what I am seeing, however, and I am 100% certain, as you can see, the music, there is a player, and the music is playing in the background, and you'll see in the video sample, there or here as well, there is no background music at all in the sample video, so clearly it's not recording the desktop audio at all, only the microphone. Other than that, I have no complaints whatsoever. Final summary and a review. Really, there's not much to say. What I am feeling with this program, this is just my hunch, is that the program was made mainly to capture screenshots and then later they decided, you know what, let's implement some video recording capabilities as well. But I don't think they were done properly. I think it was sort of patched. Let's just try to put in some recording capabilities. I think some basic options should be there, which I present in the screenshot. I'll be honest, I don't think the program is re actually video recording program, but still, let's run it through this little image of mine and see how many points does it get. 30 frames per second, it, it can record up to 60. 1080p, it definitely can record 1080p. Actually, it can record both monitors at the same time, so who knows where the limit is when it comes to frame size, but it definitely can record 1080p. There is no watermark, there is no time limit, all of those check. Record both desktop sound and microphone. That's an X. Next, record microphone into a separate audio track. There's no option to do that. Record mouse. You can actually untick if you want your mouse to be recorded or not. Record a webcam. Under sources, I'm sure you could be able to select your webcam and record it solo, but there is no option to actually put the webcam on the recording itself. I I'm gonna say the option is partially there, I guess. There is no pause button and also save the common video and audio formats. I think it can only record to MP4 and that is about it. So what's my final grade for this program? Not gonna tell you.
No, you should know the drill by now. So check out the comments, check out the description, and there is actually a document there that you can open up and you'll see all the grades, all the reviews, everything that I have done so far. So check it out. There's a bunch of information there, and that's going to be it. I'm going to ask you to leave your comments below, share some feedback with me. Also, feel free to rate the video. Consider doing those things, and thank you so much for tuning into this one. I'll catch you in the next video. Priest out. Always do it on my own, so I gotta get through it. And the only thing I know is to love what I'm doing. Never give up, never slow till I finally prove it. Never listen to the no's, I just wanna keep moving. Keep my head up when I act. Head up, that's a fact. Never looking.